Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. It's 808 day, the 8th of August. Well, you're probably not seeing this on the 8th of August, but it's what it is. <laughs> I'm 63. I was in college when the 808 appeared. I remember very well the day that my composing partner, Roy, brought a brand spanking new 808 into the studio. We were so excited. We'd been working with analog synthesizers for a while, and here was a standalone unit that had a rhythm sequencer built in and all of the various kind of drum instruments that we've been struggling to replicate. We used white noise and sine waves. We used envelope generators and um, filters to kind of shape individual sounds, sometimes tweaking sequences for hours and hours. And suddenly Roland provided us with this amazing device. Well, these days when kids talk about 808s, mostly they're talking about that beautiful kick drum, that bottom end. There are a number of great recreations. I'll show you a couple of my favorites. Well, I'm a giant fan of uh, Sonic Couture. I think I've probably mentioned that before. And my go-to um, electro kits come from Electro Acoustic. And Electro Acoustic uh, has a ton of presets. As you can see, these dry dum drum machines offer the 606, which was my personal favorite analog kit back in the day, kind of this weird little thing that ran with the 303, 808s and 9s, as well as a whole bunch of other unusual kits. Uh, the cachet of electroacoustic is that they've resampled individual sounds through vintage um, valve tube gear, as well as putting it into rooms, and you can resynthesize all of these individual sounds. It means you can get this giant drum sound. But here's the dry 808 kick. Let's listen. Beautiful sound. I have the decay set very high. Let's take the decay down. Selecting the snare, now I have uh, various effects, including snappy. You hear the effect there? But this is what I really want to show you. Let's send it through um, a couple of compressors. You hear it bringing up things and then the valve version of same. Whoa, crazy, right? Um, pull that back and now put it into various rooms. And then here's room two. You've got rattling like you would have on a regular kit. Do you hear the hum hum, kind of like a real snare drum, and uh, a different one. And then here's the thing. You can send everything through a PA and sample it out in the room. So let's send it through a PA, basically resampling through a speaker, more or less. And let's give it a little room sound. Let's do the same thing with the kick. We'll put the highs and the lows through the PA. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, this is a great instrument. The dry kits are great. They've got a bunch of electroacoustic kits that are kind of combinations of th those things hybrid kits, and then these kind of weird focused tune things. For instance, we'll just take an example and we'll pop over to the tuned kick. Send it. Hear a little bit of air, the PA, a little more room sound, and a little kit resonance. Oh man, it's so thick. I love this kit. But if you haven't got contact, you, uh, there are any number of other options for you, including a couple of very, very good battery 808 kits. So uh, you know how battery works. It's basically like um, the drum machine in, uh, or the drum sort of kit sampler in live. You just have a bunch of slots that you can put drum sounds in and then go nuts on each of the slots. So right here, the there's my kick right there, and I have all these controls for it down here. Now, as it happens, I've got kicks on C and C sharp all the way up the keyboard. So I've got eight possible kicks there, and they're great. 
battery is a terrific instrument. People don't talk about it very much anymore, but it's not a bad go-to. Um, and you can assign, you know, it's great to play with pads. It's sort of pad-oriented, isn't it? it? I'm in the native, while I'm in the native instruments universe here, take a look at this reactor um, instrument. Uh, round body, the TRK. Uh, K, the TRK has like several different instruments that are part of the system, and this is their kick drum. <laughs> Man, that's thick. It is crazy. And it's basically synthesizing it. So every hit's a little bit different. You can do all kinds of detailed work. I was playing around with a round body that I sort of tweaked a bit, but uh, just to sort of... Because it's a synthesizer, there's all kinds of qualities that you can get out of it. Well, just terrific. Now, you know, finally, and I think it's worth mentioning, right here in Logic, the very simple mono synth, the ESM, can make a pretty good bottom. It's kind of a sub sound. And uh, you can hear that I have the filter turned way down. Just increase overdrive. And it's nice for bass because you've got this glide, right? <laughs> well, I have to say the, uh, the 808 really changed an awful lot for everybody. And it gave us access to a programmable uh, synthesizer for drums that did a bunch of stuff that we'd been struggling with to, you know, in individual modules. All in one package, easy to pick up and go. Back in the day when uh, Roy and I were in fiction music in New York, we used to send the, uh, I think it was the clave, out to an MS-20, and it was like a plus five voltage, and it would just trigger the MS-20s, so the uh, 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 envelope generator. So what we had was uh, our bass player would just hold down a note, and every time the clave came in, bong, <laughs> exactly synced to the drum machine. You get it done the way you get it done. <laughs> We're talking like 1982 here. I hope this was useful. 808 day, a day of reflection and contemplation. Well, like and subscribe, ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos, and I will see you next time.